Well, the battle for the U.S. presidency is heating up as Americans have begun casting their votes. At least 120 million uh, people are expected to render judgment on whether to give President Barack Obama a second term or replace him with Republican challenger Mitt Romney. Joining us now to take a look at the U.S. presidential race, Whitney Schneidman, Senior International Advisor at Covington and Burling LLP. Whitney, thank you so much for joining us. You, You've cast your vote a few, we a few weeks ago. I did. Three weeks ago, I voted on a Saturday in my hometown of Alexandria, Virginia. Virginia. Proud mm -hmm. to do so. But you're here today to talk about U.S.-Africa relations. Um, you know, you spent a lot of time doing some work on it. That's what your work focuses on. Yes. Um, I suppose one of the key features uh, from, for many in Africa is the fact that Africa hasn't featured That's a lot right. in, in the election campaign this That's time right. around. Uh, is that something new? Um, would, you, as an, would you say that Africans are a bit too sensitive about this issue? Uh, they may be a little sensitive. I mean, everybody wants their region spoken about in a U.S. presidential election, so there's obvious uh, concern. But I think uh, Africa didn't feature much. It was, it was interesting in the, in the presidential foreign policy debate, Mitt Romney actually, actually mentioned uh, Northern Mali twice, mm -hmm. but it was more in an ad, ad hoc manner. And, and we, also more surrounding security issues right exactly. now with you know, the rise of terrorism on the continent. Exactly. And what we haven't had is a real debate about trade and investment and what is the best approach for promoting U.S. business in Africa. And I think that still uh, is yet to come. Yeah, I mean, you you were very much involved in AGOA, which of course is the African Growth and Opportunity Act. That's right. Um, it's helping to reduce import duties uh, for, for exports from Africa in, into That's America. Right. Um, has this worked? It's worked, I think it's worked pretty well. It's, uh, uh, AGOA reduced the duties on some 6,000 products coming from Africa. And South Africa is actually the big beneficiary of AGOA once you take oil out of the equation. But the question is, how do we deepen this relationship? And how do we get more American companies investing in Africa and how do we get more African companies taking advantage of AGOA and I mm -hmm. think that's going to be on the agenda of the next administration whether it's Obama or Romney. I mean the view right now is that Africa has been an afterthought. I think Obama recently launched his own uh, signature US strategy for right. sub-Saharan Africa but right. uh, the view is while their view with the kind of the status quo hasn't really changed between America you know sub-Saharan Africa's strategy uh, you've got emerging markets like China being a lot more aggressive and overtaking the U.S. as Africa's largest trading partner. So, so what is your view on kind of the switch in dynamics there? I think, I think the U.S. needs to do more. There's no question about it. And I think we need to be more focused on how we help American companies understand the, Amer uh, the African market and to capture opportunities in the African market. Oh, what, is the, what is the issue right now? Because you bring up the issue of understanding. Is yes. there a lack of, is, is there the wrong perception? You know, having spoken to Americans, at, there is, a, there is a, you know, the wrong perception of Africa. That's what I, you know, I've you come know, across. I think, unfortunately, Americans, many Americans, too many Americans, I would argue, still have a concept of Africa as a continent of corruption, disease, and war, as opposed to one of opportunity, growth, and progress. And I would hope that the next administration really aligns America's interests with the emerging middle class in Africa, with those you know, fast growing countries uh, on the continent, and helps them understand how to engage in mm. the various sectors. Let's talk about Obama versus Romney and what okay. this means uh, for, for policy going forward. Yeah. Um, some are saying that Romney could be better for, for Africa. What is your view on this? <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think we would want both of them to do more. Um, I think we were all surprised, to be honest with you, by George Bush and how much he did for Africa, both in the health sector and with initiatives like the uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation. But in fact, there's been a lot of continuity in U.S. policy toward Africa, starting with the African Growth and Opportunity Act. And I would hope that whosoever president really drills down on the commercial aspect, while also addressing very important issues like Africa's youth and development and democracy and transparency and accountability and obviously the security issues. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to do here and I'm confident that if President Obama is re-elected, he will certainly engage on these uh, topics. Yeah, they are saying unfinished business when it comes to, to Africa. Thank you yes. so much for joining us today. Whitney Schneidman, Senior International Advisor at Covington and Burling LLP. Joining us now to set the scene for this close race is Steve Leisman. Uh, he's a Senior Economics Reporter at CNBC USA. He's not there yet. Um, so, so, Whitney, you're still with me here. Okay. So, so let me come back to you because 
Steve is going to set the tone for us, what the mood's like in the States today. Of yeah. course, we've had Hurricane Sandy. I'm sure yeah. you've got uh, relatives in the States yes. who, you know, got views on this. But yes. tell us, uh, from your perspective, um, you know, how, how, what the mood is there today well, and how it's been in the, in the run-up to the election. I think one of the big issues right now is public polling versus private polling because we see in, in the polling in the States that Obama has several point lead but the Romney campaign has leaked its own polling that says no that they've got the lead and so we're waiting to see what the data really bears out but I think it's important to remember that in 2008 Barack Obama won but he only won with 52 percent of the vote so it just shows how divided America is yeah. but I'm to be honest with you confident that President Obama will will win again and sort of get that uh, majority of Americans to give them a second term.